In this video, I will show you step by step the install of a wall hung toilet. I will mount an in wall tank and finish the wall hung bowl. So let's get started. I'm working with a gabbret, wall tank, and carrier. Once figured out the location of the toilet, frame the opening for the wall tank carrier. This will indicate where you need to rough in the new 3 inch drain line. I'm going to mount my tank carrier in the framing and move the wall so I can cut the floor open to relocate the drain line. There was an existing toilet at the other end of the washroom. Now the wall is moved and the floor is open. You can see on the far right is where the old toilet location was. I was lucky that its old location was over the main stack, so I will have an easy time tying in the new drain. Once happy with drain dry fit, it's time to glue together and fasten pipes so it slopes one quarter inch per foot before closing the floor, I will run a half inch water line to the top left side behind the carrier unit. With the wall moved back in, it's time to fasten it really well to the floor and existing wall. Use plenty of fasteners to make sure your wall is solid and will never move. On this project where I'm about standing right there, I've got to also hang the cabinet from there. So there's going to be quite a bit of weight on this wall. And this is a very important stage. I've got my socket set and I'm going to mount the carriage permanently into the wall and floor. I'm using quarter inch lag bolts for top and bottom, wood screws into the side rails. And it's very important to follow all manufacturer specs. Once rough in is complete, close up wall. Use protector plugs to fill into the tank's holes and protective sleeves for the carrier's threaded rods. On this project, I've got earth gray marble to install before I can finish with the bowl and dual flush plate. Look how important fastening that wall was. Wall hung toilet and floating cabinet. Once tile and grout are finished, you will mark out the length to cut these two pipes that connect the tank to the toilet. These pipes slide into a tight seal on the tank and toilet. Use manufacturer's lubrication on seal and pipe to allow it to go together with ease. On the threaded rods, I've attached the locking pieces that will hold the bowl. Before I set the tank, I need the noise reduction gasket installed. This gasket prevents the bowl from having contact with the wall. One last check on the locking pieces. Lube the fittings that will slide into the bowl. This is an image of the back of the bowl, so you can see where the pipes and rods are going. Lay a folded drop cloth on the ground at the height you need the bowl at. Slide tank in making sure the bolts and pipes are lined up. Push until the pipes are into the bowl. Once fitted tight to the gasket, use the two bolts supply and start to thread up underneath into the locking studs. If you have set the locking pieces perfectly on the threaded rods, there will be no play between the toilet and the wall. It should be super solid. In behind the flush plate, I have installed the water line to the tank. It needed a shut off and then connected with a braided line attached to the tank. Turn on water. While that's filling, 
Grab a knife and trim off the extra gasket. I try to run my cut in on an angle so that I can fill more silicone in that joint rather than seeing the gasket through the silicone. Get it in really, really tight so that you can get a generous bead down inside that joint. The tank is full, time to flush. Look for leaks on the floor underneath the bowl. I'm going to check on the other side of the wall. I have an opening in the walk-in closet to be able to take a look at the drain lines leading from the carriage. After filling the tank and testing, time to install the dual flush switch. Clip on bottom and push upward. Springs in the bottom will allow it to move up and over the top clip. A couple more test flushes, checking for leaks and problems. I'll head back into that closet, checking underneath the carriage to make sure that's all good. I recommend always create ways to view the plumbing after install. It's part of a good home maintenance program to be able to get inside and see where connections have been made, to see water lines, and to have shut off valves at every location. The toilet is testing really well, now it's time to install the seat. I found this seat to be quite unique. It has a couple of quick release buttons on the side that allow you to remove it when you want to do cleaning. So you can really get around that area making sure it's all nice and clean by simply unclicking the side of the toilet and it will release from the pins. With the mounting studs tightened down, it's time to put the decorative covers over top of them and click in the finished seat. Time for the final test. I'm going to apply a bead of translucent silicone around the perimeter of the tank. This will prevent any bacteria or cleaning solution from getting behind. I will not silicone underneath and there will always be a way to see if there's a leak. Once the toilet is in use for a couple of days, check to see if there's any play or movement with the bowl. If not, that's a good indication of a flawless install. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. Looking for more info on residential plumbing? Check out Plumbing 101 in the Construction Coach videos. This video is part of the Luxury Bathroom Renovation Playlist. Have a look at the playlist to see the whole project come together step by step. And thanks so much for watching.